Hi everyone and welcome to this question on solving simple quadratics. Uh, it's a lot shorter title than the one that actually uh, Cambridge are using. Thank you very much to Cambridge for allowing me to use your examples. You guys rock. Now I'm Darren from Maths Guru. Thank you very much for watching. Um, head over there to uh, my website and it's uh, totally free to sign up. You can uh, download all the lesson notes behind me and watch videos and it's all very exciting. And if you can, please, uh, can you sign up to uh, or subscribe to my YouTube channel? Um, very few people watch this content and if you can, it just honestly it means the world to me I, I get so disillusioned at times that uh, I sit here doing this hoping to help as many people as I can and only three people a day sort of find my content so if you can be one of those three that would be great all right that little click from you really does mean the world to me all right so let's see what are we going to do this is building on the previous video if you haven't watched the previous video again head to mathsguru.com it's all there it's sort of the introduction to what a quadratic was what it looks like and effectively what we're trying to do here this video I'm going to build on that and basically, we're going to look at very simple quadratics. And again, what it means to solve them. Um, and hopefully, if you have remembered from the previous video, when I have quadratics, and there's lots of ways quadratics can look, um, we are effectively looking, when we solve them, to find out where these quadratics cross my x-axis, right? That's actually a solution, and they are really important. And the way we do that is to use the null factor law and a bit of factorization, or more importantly, factorization and then the null factor law. That's where we're going with this. Now, a quadratic is effectively a U-shape or an N-shape. It's a special type of graph. It has an axis of symmetry. Do you understand what I mean by that? So an axis of symmetry, or an actress, who said actress? Axis of symmetry, or an axis of symmetry, basically is the line that cuts it in half so that it's even either side. And that line has a really, really important function, and it has an equation, which we can sort of look at a little bit later on when we go back to linear. It's parabolic. So this particular shape is called a parabola, all right? It's a U shape. It can also be an N shape. We can turn them upside down, which I showed you in a previous video. Um, it has a turning point. So this point here, that very bottom point there is its turning point. And we can call it a maximum or it can be called a minimum. Now in this situation, it's called a minimum because that's the lowest point that the graph ever gets to. If the graph is the other way around, it, then that point there would become a maximum, all right? Again, I, I say this over and over again, quadratics are massive. We've already done it sort of in the first semester. We did it earlier in this course um, and it's back again. So it's really important that you spend lots of time working on this and you've got to be able to factorize quadratics. If you can't, I've got videos on this, proof mathsguru.com, you can do that. Um, but we're going to start with the simple stuff first, just to sort of ease you back in gently. Now, why do we need to know where it crosses the x-axis? Uh, later on, you're going to want to sketch these things. Rather than draw them beautifully or plot them, we want to sketch them. And to be able to sketch them, we need to know three things. One, whether it's a u-shape or whether it's an n-shape. We need to know what the lowest point is or the highest point, and we need to know where it crosses the x-axis. When we've got those sort of four pieces of information or three pieces of information, we can actually sketch these things pretty accurately. We also probably need to know where it crosses the y-axis. We're going to take all that learning we've done before and sort of squeeze it into one like a chubby little baby and then squeeze the life out of it. No, don't. That's not very good um, to be able to sort of get this. Right. Now, quadratics, as I say here, they can be written in a particular format. Yeah. Now, you wouldn't necessarily have seen them as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. I can't really remember. All right. But we can swap them around. So if you notice here, all I've done is moved each side of the equation to the other side. So what was on the right hand side is now on the left hand side. And what was on the left hand side is left right hand side. That's exactly the same. All right. Now, when we change the y into a zero, and that was sort of said in the previous part of this course, when we had sort of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, we said here that that was helping us find the solutions of our equation. And the solutions were where it crossed the x-axis. So why are we changing the y into a zero? Why can we change the y in this situation into a zero? Well, I sort of alluded to that in previous part of the course. If I draw a horizontal line through there, believe it or not, that is the line y equals zero. So the x-axis actually has an alternative name. It's the name y equals zero. And so what we're really doing when we're actually solving ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero is we're actually saying, where does this graph here cross 
the line y equals zero. And that's because that just so happens to be the x-axis, then we call these things here our solutions, right? Again, it, there's way more to this than that. But if you can just get the idea that the reason we're making y equal to zero is so that we can find out where the parabola crosses the x-axis, you are streets ahead of probably the rest of this state. Now, there are lots of different forms of quadratic equations. And when we were factorizing these pre uh, previously, you had to learn all of them. And I've said there were four main types, all right? So what are the four main types? There was this one, which was nice and basic. Y equals X squared. We had this one here, which was X squared minus four, which if you remember, it was DOPS. There's this one here, which is a basic type of factorization where you would just factorize X out. Makes life a lot, lot easier. And then there's this one here with the three terms. And when there's the three terms, we'd have to use the T method or, you know, the cross method or whatever it is you do to be able to do it, right? So again, putting them equal to zero literally has no real difference other than the fact that I'm trying to find out where these graphs cross my um, x-axis. So if I fire up Desmos again, let's bring this forward so there. So I'm going to go back to my first example there and say uh, x squared minus 4 equals 0. So x squared uh, minus 4. Now when it's equal to 0, what are we looking for? The crossing points. And what we can see here is there's a crossing point at minus 2, 0 and 2, 0. Now again, when you do that, you're only really looking for the x values. So we would say there is a solution at minus 2 and two, that's the whole point of being able to do this, is to find out where they cross these axes. What was another one? 2x squared plus 3x equals zero. So let's do that one then. So what do we got? 2x squared plus 3x. Now again, I'm don't put the equals zero here. I don't need to. That equals zero is just asking for the crossing points. But again, what do we get here? We got minus one and a half and zero. So if I was to go away and solve these and, and factorize them and use the null factor law, the values I'd get out would be x equals minus 1.5 and x equals zero. Right, let's continue. Now each of these equations can be written in different ways and we can factorize them uh, in different ways as I said before. So let's have a look now, itchy head, at the type of equations that are ax squared minus d equals zero, yes?